If you're struggling with burnout or worried you might run the risk of burning out, this one's for you. Because I know so many students out there are balancing LSAT prep with other obligations, whether it's work, school, or family, and it's hard to juggle everything at once. And then on the other end, if you are fortunate enough to be able to study for the LSAT full time, it's easy to go overboard with it. And so no matter what your situation is, burnout is a real risk that you will likely encounter. So the question is, how can you prep for the LSAT without reaching the point of burnout? How can you study just the right amount, not too little, but not too much? If you're studying for the LSAT full time with no other obligations, it's very easy to do LSAT or nothing but LSAT from morning till night with only the smallest of breaks here and there. And of course, after 10, 12 hours of LSAT prep in a single day, you run the serious risk of diminishing marginal returns to the point that it becomes counterproductive. If on the other hand, you are balancing LSAT prep with other obligations, whether it's working full time or you are in school or you have the family obligations, it's hard to fit everything in and do it all at your fullest capacity. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve the optimal balance while still doing everything you can to achieve the highest LSAT score possible in a way that is both efficient and sustainable over the long term. So first, for those of you who are in the fortunate position to be able to, to study for the LSAT full time, no other, no other obligations, you're not working, you're not in school, you don't have big family obligations or big obligations with a significant other, you are able to put in as much time for the LSAT as you want. In this case, of course, I recommend that you limit your studying to a certain amount, no more than typically five to six hours of dedicated focused studying. Anything more than that, you run the risk of burnout. It's real. I've seen it. I've been there personally as well. Trust me, you do not want to be in this situation, especially in the final weeks and days before the LSAT. If you haven't experienced burnout before, it's a situation where you've done so much LSAT that you basically don't even see the question in front of you anymore. You know the material, but you can't translate the theory into application on real LSAT practice questions. You're getting things wrong and you don't even know why. When you review it afterwards, it seems totally obvious, but in the moment, you couldn't make heads or tails of the question. It's not because you don't know the material. It's not because you don't have the ability. It's just because you've gone overboard and you've basically temporarily fried your brain. The solution for burnout, of course, is quite simple in this case. It is take a break, take a day off or even a week off if your LSAT isn't just around the corner. It's okay. The LSAT is a skill. The test They're testing skills, not content, not material. And so you're not going to lose it by taking a day off or even a week off. It's not the sort of thing you memorize with flashcards. And so it won't all just empty out of your brain. If you take some time away, you avoid this situation again by limiting the number of hours you're putting in in a given day. Again, no more than five to six hours max. And of course, taking days off is totally fine. I recommend taking off at least one or two days per week to help you avoid running the risk of burnout. I also recommend that you do not take practice tests on consecutive days for the same reason. We don't want you to burn out. And so I actually build days off into my LSAT study schedules for this very reason. Whenever a student joins my LSAT prep program, whether it's the small group coaching program or one-on-one -on -one coaching, and we build you a personalized day-by-day -day study plan, in every single week, you'll see we build in at least two days off for this very reason to help you avoid running the risk of burnout. Now, if you are not so lucky as to be able to study for the LSAT full-time, which is of course the majority of people out there, if you're working or you're in school, you have family obligations, of course, you're gonna to wanna to fit in your LSAT prep time where you can. For example, if you're working full-time, maybe an hour before work, maybe an hour during lunch, maybe an hour after work. You don't need to do all three, of course, because again, I don't, I don't want you to burn out. You fit it in where you can. The one thing I would avoid doing is studying for the LSAT very late at night when you're tired. So if you're a paralegal working long hours, you're working overtime, you get home at 10, 11 p.m., I would not recommend studying for the LSAT till 1 or 2 a.m. that night. It's okay to say, you know what, there's not gonna be any LSAT today, I'll make it up later, maybe more on a lighter day, maybe more on the weekends. Fit it in where you can, reasonably do so. But when you're tired, of course, is not the best time to be putting in LSAT prep because it's only going to discourage you and further fatigue you. But know that it may take longer for you to achieve your LSAT goals. It may take longer in weeks and months if you have other obligations like work or school, and that's totally fine. Also know that you don't need to cover 
all 100 LSAT prep tests. Back when I took the LSAT, there were only 40 something exams and that was plenty for me. Just because there are more than double that number now doesn't mean that you need to do more than double the number of practice tests. So set a reasonable goal for yourself in terms of how many LSAT prep tests you will complete within a given period of time. Maybe it's only going to be 20 or 30 exams if you're taking the LSAT in the next couple of months. Maybe it's only 40 or 50 if you're taking the LSAT in, say, four or five months. But it's the rare student who actually is going to reasonably complete all 100 prep tests. So what I'm suggesting here ultimately is that you limit the amount of material that you, that you set out to complete for yourself so that you don't take on unreasonable obligations. For the same reason, choose your resources carefully, the ones that you invest your time in. Just because someone, a friend, a family member gave you some old LSAT prep book, that doesn't mean that that's the material you should actually be completing. An LSAT prep book from 10, 20 years ago isn't worth your time just because you got it for free. You can easily buy a used copy of a newer LSAT prep book for maybe 20 bucks, and that'll be a way better use of your time. You wanna make sure that you're getting your LSAT prep support from people you trust and that you're choosing your resources carefully. And that's one reason why I personally release 98% of my material for free so that you can actually try out my materials before deciding whether to work with me. My goal is that my free material, whether it's on YouTube, the podcast, TikTok, Instagram and such, will be sufficient to get you into at least the 160s so that you'll see that it works. And then I can personally bring you into the 170s to my one-on-one -on -one coaching and small group coaching and such. And so my goal is that you can make a more informed decision before going deeper on a particular LSAT resource so that you're investing your time and your resources carefully so that you're not doing too much at once. You're not taking on several different LSAT prep systems. You're choosing one source, one material, and you're sticking with it all the way through. If you'd like my help, of course, there are a variety of ways I could support you, whether it's through our live online classes via Zoom, on-demand video courses, small group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. Any of them could be the key to helping you avoid burnout through our personalized day-by-day -day study plans and helping you reach into the 170s. So please feel free to check out the links below this video to find out more and to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. And if you found this video helpful, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. I don't do any advertising for the channel. I rely only on word of mouth to help get the word out and your sharing this video really does make a difference. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.